Hey, 83K Nation, I'm excited that you've joined us here today. Thank you for supporting us. I want to do something special for you. I want to take you into a live seminar that I did called The Fast Experience. I believe God wants to change some areas of your life really fast, but you need some strategies on how to make it happen. You're going to be blessed by this session that I did. But listen, we're also running this month a special for my 83K Society. You can get in this month for free for the first 60 days where I coach Christian entrepreneurs to experience higher levels of success personally, professionally, and financially. Make sure that you sign up for this opportunity this week. Let's go into this live session together. We're going to talk about the number one tool that you need to create a brand new financial tomorrow. How many know God makes all things what? Yeah, all things possible, but God makes all things new. And we've been talking about it. Each financial level you go to, you've got to have a mental mindset. So the mindset that you need to move from poverty, which is, you know, at $40,000 a year to $100,000 a year, is a different mindset. The mindset that you need for $100,000 a year is not the mindset you need for a million dollars a year. Are you following me with that? At each new financial level. See, everybody wants to go to the next level, right? But your financial situation will always rise to the level of your mentality. And unless you have a brand spanking new mindset change, and you reset it, you'll never go to that next level because your finances will rise to your level of financial competency. I want you to get that. Your finances will rise to your level of financial competency. Now, that's another big fancy word there, isn't it? <laughs> and it just, it just means that your finances will rise to the level of your knowledge. Now, when I was in my mother-in-law's house, I was telling you about this, um, I, I was fortunate when I was struggling and I was praying to God, I said, God, uh, I need someone to help me. And what happened was, is because I wasn't getting the results that I wanted financially, it affected me and impacted me spiritually. Does that make sense? Because if I'm struggling financially, and I have what either, number one, I have a miracle millionaire mentality. That's what I call it. <laughs> God's going to make me a millionaire, and he's going to wave his magical wand and bling! I'm going to be a millionaire, right? I call it the millionaire miracle mentality that one day God's going to turn this all thing around, right? Or if I'm over here and I have the miser millionaire mentality, <laughs> you, you, you do understand what the miser millionaire mentality is. The miser millionaire mentality is I'm going to mise my way to wealth. So I'm going to shrink down my lifestyle. I'm going, to live, I'm going to live like a poor person my entire 40 years of existence so that, cross my fingers, I don't die. I'm going to live a self-sacrificing life. I'm going to not eat the popcorn. I'm not going to go on the dates. I'm going to, I'm going to drive a jalopy. I'm not going to spend any money on myself and any nice stuff. I'm going to just say, no, 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 Nancy Norman. No, 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 I can't afford nothing. Right? That's what Nancy teaches you. So now I live my life as a miser. I'm, 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 I'm like, yeah, I buy onto that philosophy, and now I'm just going to live like a miser. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, you can, you can become a millionaire being a miser. No doubt about it. That's why when you do do the studies of people who have a million, the ones that do, they're not the ones the model. Oh, the ones who reach a millionaire status are the, are the accountants. <laughs> this is what the study revealed. They're accountants, they're architects. What are, what are all these people? All these people are low-key people. They're not entrepreneurs, right? They're all these, and, and it's like, whoa, whoa, look at what they did. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, but, but they lived their whole life. You know, like if you read the book, The Millionaire Next Door, and everybody like, look at the model of the millionaire next door. He lives in a real cheap community, drives cheap cars. And we're like, this is the model. Yeah, of the miser. How many of you know people have a lot of money or have a million dollars and don't give none to nobody? That's what scrimping thinking leads to. I'm not thinking abundance. I'm not thinking abundance. I'm not thinking of, I, I need to make a lot of money so I can help other people, so I can be a blessing to the kingdom of God. I don't want to be a miser, scrunching, cra- scratching my way to it. I want to have this abundant thinking. But the, the church, what happened to me is the church brainwashed me into this miser millionaire thought. And if I wasn't thinking miser, I was like, I was like schizophrenia because I was thinking I'm gonna be, I'm, 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 I gotta my, be a miser millionaire. But then over here, I, I, was, like, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a miracle millionaire. One of these days, God's gonna wave his wand. But my multi-millionaire buddy came into my life and he, he gave me the truth in the center. And he said to me one day, I'll never forget the day. We're driving down the road, and he looks over me. Now, this guy kind of shaped your mind. God really blessed me with this guy in my life. This guy was a consultant to guys at the level of, like, T.D. Jakes. So the whole concept of the woman thou art loose, he was behind that whole whole thing. I'm, I'm trying to give you the scale of where this guy This guy had worked with the big of the big. And I knew it, and I was like, you know, when I got around him, I'm like intimidated. I mean, that's the kind of rooms you got to put yourself in. You (laughs) you got to put yourself into rooms where people are like, you're like, whoa, man, right? And I'm driving in the car, and he looks looks at me, and he says, Keith, do you want to know the secret of people who are super, super successful. I'm like, yeah. And in my book, Financial Fast Track, how to experience abundance, accelerate results, and eliminate bad debt, I have what I laid out are seven strategies. Seven strategies that help you Build wealth and eliminate bad debt. What's the word I'm using? Bad debt. Meaning, the whole title insinuates if there's bad, there has to be good. All right? And I'm going to explain a little bit of that to you a little later on how there is good debt. Right? But we're going we're to look at that. But through this experience in that year... I basically, to get out of where I was and to change my circumstances in three years, there are seven key strategies that I used. And I've I've learned a lot from these strategies that I learned from him and others that helped change the whole dynamic. And so in the Financial Fast Track book, I give you all seven in my Financial Fast Track University, I dive deep down into them. So I write certain things in the book, but I go even deeper in my Financial Fast Track University. And so you see the seven, but today I want to just talk to you about number one, the first track, because what this guy said was a total game changer for my life, 
And the first track, if you just give us a click on the slide, the first track, and here is basically what this guy said to me. He said, Keith, what I learned from these super high-level successful people is that they learn to live in the future today. And I'm like, what? He said, yeah, they, they have gone into the future and they live there before it even appears. And he said, Keith, I know you're at your lowest point. I'm just curious, how many of you are facing some financial struggles in your life right now? I'm just curious. So, okay, I see. Okay, okay. Thank you for your honesty. Let's give him a hand clap. I appreciate that. I appreciate that honesty. Thank you so much. I celebrate people who are like that. And um, I was at my lowest point, and I lost, you got to understand, I lost everything. I mean, I was, I mean, it, it's, I, I wasn't even at ground zero. I was below, <laughs> I was $180,000 in credit card debt, and I thought I'd lost everything. And he said, Keith, he says, your problem is you don't know what your number one asset is. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, you have a superpower. Just like a hero. How many know every hero has a superpower? Yep. Superman can what? Fly. Fly. That's right. Flash can what? Right he can run really fast. Everybody's got their superpower. We, we're kind of caught up with the whole superpower thing, right? But do you know you have a superpower? That's what he said. And he said, even though it looks like you've lost everything, your superpower, Keith, is the same superpower T.D. Jakes and all these other super-duper successful people that I have coached and I run with who pay me a lot of money to do what I do. I said, what is it? He said, your superpower is your imagination. Your imagination is your number one asset to building massive amount of wealth and getting you out of your financial situation. Hmm. Now, I want to illustrate how the imagination works because it's very important that you understand this so that you can get on the new plane of where God wants to take you. And this story illustrates it really well. There was... There was a famous golfer, and he got an invite from the king of Saudi Arabia to come and play golf with him. And he called him up and said, hey, I, I want you to come play golf with me. And of course, the famous golfer accepts the challenge from the king. He jumps on the plane, flies to Saudi Arabia. He plays 18 holes of golf. At the end of 18 holes, the king of Saudi Arabia looks at the famous golfer and says, hey, it is custom." For me to give you a gift when you come to my country. He said, ask anything you want and I will give it to you. And the famous golfer scratching his head thinking, what do I want? And he basically responds to the king said, hey, I got everything. I got limos. I got money. I got big mansions. I got houses. I don't need anything. Just being with you is all I need. And the king gets indignant. No, it is custom. You must ask and I give you anything you want. And he looks at the guy's bag of golf clubs and he says, oh, how about a golf club? He says, I'd like a golf club from a king. The king says, it is done. The guy flies back home and he's thinking in his mind, what's this golf club going to look like? He's, he's thinking, is it going to be pure gold? Is it going to have, is it going to be blinged out with diamonds? Is it going to have rubies on it? You know, he's like thinking, what is this thing going to look like? A week later, knock on the door. Delivery from the king of Saudi Arabia. And he gets out there, man. He, he rushes to the door. He opens the door. It's a FedEx guy. He's got a square package. He's like, what? He opens the square package, reaches in, pulls out a title deed to a golf club. <laughs> Not a golf, a golf Is it possible that we're coming to a God who thinks golf clubs? 
and only asking him for putters. You see, if you're going to go to the next level financially, you've got to think like a king thinks. Kings operate at a different level than the citizens. Kings operate out of their imagination and they function from a place of speed. They give a command and they want it done when? Not 40 years. Kings think fast. That's the way you should think because that's the way God thinks. Kings live out of their imagination with no limitations that anything is possible. Because kings don't think lack. There's an abundance of money and the king knows it. The peasants and the citizens think what? Lack because they lack it. Remember, he is the king of all of what? He's not the king of peasants. You are a king, may I remind you? I said you are a king. He's the king of... Just lift your hand and say, I'm a king. Yeah, we'll start thinking like it. But I want to show you something. It's not just think big. See, we got a lot of people, you need to think big. How many of you ever heard? You got to think big. I think big. I want to propose to you that God doesn't think big. God thinks higher. Yes. It's not think big because big is quantifiable. Higher is getting into another realm. I want to tell you, Elon Musk doesn't think big. He thinks higher. Because he's living not out of his mind, he's living out of his imagination. Oh, you want to censor me on Twitter? I'll buy you. Hmm. Oh. You need internet anywhere you need to go. Let's create a personal internet service where you have a disc flying over you and you can download your internet and get your internet wherever you want to. And by the way, let's ship it over to this country who's in war so they can have internet even though they wiped all their internet out. Wow. Hey, let's go to Mars. Why not? When you're living out of your imagination, you're living out of a place of no limitations. And that's when you enter into your higher self. Everybody say, my higher self. What, what, watch this in scriptures, Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Your ways are not my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways, what? Circle that word right there. The way I function is in a higher dimension than what you do. And notice he keeps saying thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Why? God functions outside of thoughts and God functions in the realm of imagination. Oh my. Think about this, think about this. Birds build nests. Beavers build dams, right? Bees build, humans build futures. My mentor said, you've got to learn to live in the, before the future even exists. My mentor told me, Keith, you got to learn the power of the imagination and learn to go into a future you desire. And you got to learn to see it and live in it and come back to your present and live like it's tomorrow. 
Man, when he taught me that, I've never forget. I, I remember, I remember my, my wife and daughter making fun of me because I was driving around this old beat-up Ford Escort. I mean, they don't even make such a car anymore. Ford Escort. And I'm preaching, I'm preaching prosperity, I'm preaching God wants you to be wealthy. And then I'd leave and go jump in my Ford Escort, and my wife and my daughter would make fun of me. You preach prosperity and you drive a Ford Escort. <laughs> And I says, oh, you're mistaken. They said, what? I said, that's what you see. But every time I get in my escort, I see my Mercedes 550S. That's what I'm getting into. You're in the wrong place. You're living in the present, not in my future. So guess how I treated that Ford Escort? Yeah, you got in my Ford Escort. You're not going to bring, my, my wife, my, my wife's classic for this. She, she, she wants to stop at McDonald's, has fries, and she eats fries, and she gets, the, she gets the salt all over my car. I'm like, uh-uh, you ain't eating in my car. She said, this is a Ford Escort. It ain't no Ford Escort. <laughs> That's, good. That's, good. That's why today, she could ask her, you're not eating in my car. I didn't let you eat in my Ford Escort. You're not eating in my, in my Mercedes. Uh-uh. See, the reason why you treat your car so bad is because you see the car. You're living for today, not in your tomorrow. If you were living in your tomorrow, you wouldn't have that. I saw a couple of your cars. You got that McDonald's bag and stuck in the back. You got all a bunch of junk in your back seat. Then your car's all dirty. You don't, you don't wash it. You don't clean it. Why? You're living in today. If you, had, if you had your dream car, would you treat it like you treat your car? No. Millionaires learn to live today like it is the future. Hmm. Now think about this. You ready to go a little higher? You ready to go higher? Oh, I'm getting ready to take you higher. Most of our preaching's toward the mind. Not the realm of imagination. Imagination's where God is. Watch this. Your mind. Everybody say, just touch your mind. Say my mind. my mind. This mind is just an organ. I want you to get this. Everybody, just touch your mind. Say my mind. My mind. All this is, it's just an organ in there. What's its purpose? To everything there is a purpose under heaven. What is the purpose of the mind? Don't you think that'd be a good idea to figure that out? The purpose of the mind, watch this, is for your survival. That's it. The purpose of the organ called the mind is just put inside of you to keep you alive. Keeps your heart beating. Keeps your... Right? Right? If there's risk, the mind says, oh, your mind is like your mother on steroids. <laughs> it is. What, what, do, what do mamas do? You, you, you want to you stand on the table as a kid with your cape on, am I right? And, and what do you want to do? You want to, and what does mama want to do? Oh, don't do that. Oh, that's dangerous. Don't take risks. Be a conservative, young man. I want to pioneer. I want to, I want to go where no man's gone before. Oh, no, that's scary. You could hurt yourself. You might have to go bankrupt. Ooh, that's, that's big trouble. That's mama. That's the brain. The only thing the brain does is put you in survival. Because think about this. What separates you from an animal? Do animals have a brain? Do they have an organ called the brain? Yeah. So they have a brain, they have a body. But what makes you different from the animal? 
the animal's brain does the same thing your brain does. It, it's in survival mode. I see a human. Oh! What's it going to do? Run away. If a snake sees you, oh, danger. Tries to scare you. Right? I'm trying to survive. The spirit. What makes us different? Spirit. God breathed into man. Spirit. Watch. Where does imagination dwell? Not the mind. That means, that means, that means animals could create nothing and make it something. I propose that inside of man, what makes us different is that imagination dwells inside a spirit. With the spirit, we then thrive. The purpose of the spirit is to put us here, not to just survive, which means just pass dead, which means living paycheck to paycheck in get by mode. I'm making enough and I should be grateful that I got food on my table, clothes on my, uh, on my back, and the rent's paid, the house mortgage is paid. I'm in survival. People living out of the mind, not out of what? The spirit is where God has imparted the imagination to man so that we're not victims of circumstances, victims of the economy. We can build our own economy and build our own kingdom. Oh, come on, somebody help me here. You, 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 build, your, you build your wealth. You build a future. In the beginning, God, what did he do? Where was he living? Mind? God is a, <laughs> God breathed into man. So we have the ability, and here's the good news. You ready for good news? The good news is, is that as long as you're breathing, you have the ability to create a new financial future. Come on, because you have an asset called the imagination. Come on, somebody clap on that. Are you hearing me? But you got you to tap into that, and you got to understand that it's available to you. I, I've had people tell me for so, such a long time, I, I've, I've had clients that they come and they say, man, Dr. J, I, I just went through a divorce. I'm like, man, man, sorry about that. Yeah, but yeah, she took everything, Dr. J. She took everything. I said, really? Yeah, I took the car. She got the house. She got the money. I'm living in an apartment. And all I have is a blow-up mattress. And I, I don't have nothing, Dr. J. She got everything. I said, she got everything. Everything. I said, you still got an imagination? I said, then she didn't get the number one thing that you can use to create a brand new life. I don't care if you're down to nothing. You can change. When I was in my mother-in-law's house, you know how I got out? <laughs> After I got home, by being run, running around with this millionaire, and he told me, your problem is that you're not seeing a future before it arrives, and you're not living there. I went back to my mother-in-law's house. I went into that little 12 by 12 room. I shut the door, and I went into my future. And I saw myself with millions coming in. I saw myself driving my Mercedes. I saw myself living in a gated community. I saw myself wearing the nicest clothes, dressing the best. I saw myself being a blessing to my church, being a blessing to millions of people all over the world. I saw myself as a best-selling author. I saw myself speaking on the biggest church stages in the world. I saw myself speaking at the business, biggest business seminars in the world. I saw it all with my imagination before it ever came to pass. Come on, I was living in my future today <laughs> through the best asset. And as long as we have imagination, we are never, ever, ever a victim. The number one request we get from entrepreneurs is, 
Hey, I love your books and teachings, but is it possible for you to mentor me? As someone who has served as a business coach and consultant for 30 years, yes, of course I want to help you. Since you visited this page, it tells me something about you. You're hungry to change your personal, professional, and financial situation. And that's the first requirement that I look for in mentoring people. If that sounds like you, I want to invite you into my private group, 83K Society. This is a tight group of seven figure earners who are ready to scale above and beyond that, as well as people who are accelerating their way to achieving the spiritual and moral goal of success and financial wealth. We've had some amazing testimonies from people I've coached, like Martine, for instance, who just had his first million dollar day. Matt Anderson, a 30 year old who bought a $27 million apartment complex. Justin King, who just had his first $83,000 month. There's Janice Rhodes, who finally published her first book. Then there's James, who made an extra $100,000 building his consulting company. There are two ways to learn, mistakes and mentors. Sadly, in the beginning, I was all alone, learning from a lot of mistakes. But when God crossed my path with millionaire mentors, that changed quickly for me. So I made a vow that when I became wealthy, I would become the person that I needed by helping others just like you. 83K Society is all about giving you access to three important things, mentoring to inform you, coaching to challenge you, and a community to support you. Here's what becoming a mentor of our 83K Society looks like for you. You're getting monthly coaching from me at our Success Symposium. You're getting access to our one-year Millionaire in the Making training program. You're getting access to the Success Vault a library of trainings on the three pillars of success, confidence, leadership, and wealth valued at over $37,000. You're also receiving fly on the wall interviews with kingdom millionaires and billionaires. And finally, you'll be automatically approved to join our 83K Society community on Facebook. You become what you focus on. If you want to become a baker, you need to study recipes and develop kitchen skills. In the same way, if you want to scale beyond seven figures, you need to study the wealthy. Listen, if you feel like you're going around in circles, you have to change the circles you get around because the fastest way to change your life is to elevate your relationships. That's why my team has created the most incredible free gift offer ever. We're going to let you have a free test drive of this mentoring experience for the first 60 days. If you'd like to continue the mentoring after 60 days, we're going to give you an additional 50% off. The investment of this membership is $83 per month and you will be able to get in for a limited time for only $39. This is a special one-time deal for you to get in to this special 83K society. When you say maybe today, you can have everything I just told you about for two full months. Click the link below and I'll see you at the next Success Symposium. If I say the word pink elephant, how many of you saw how many of you saw a pink elephant? Raise your hand. Did you see a pink elephant? Question, is there any such thing as a pink elephant? No. But what did you do? You used your mind or your imagination to see it? Your imagination, it's an image maker. There's a factory inside of your spirit designed to create images. 
And you are responsible for creating those images. And you need to create two important images. Number one, you need to paint a, an image of a future that you want. You need to create a picture. Who's responsible to create the picture? God? Think about it. If God gave you a tool, is he responsible if you don't use the tool? Can you blame God? God, why is, why is this happening to me? Why, 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 why have you chosen to make me poor? God, why have you chosen me to be a middle class and struggle and have to believe you for a miracle all the time? Why the stress? Why the pressure? Why, why? God, why, why? As if it's God's fault. And God would say back to you, my son, my daughter, I gave you a tool. You ain't using it. You got comfortable in America. And you like your little picket fence. You like your little two cars in the garage. You like your little three bedroom, two bath. And that's all you've dreamed up of. And you haven't used your tool to imagine yourself in a future where there's $100 million in your bank account. Well, golly, man. Yeah. You haven't used it. And if you don't use it, guess what happens to your imagination factory? Closed. Out of business. And now you get into carnal living. Living according to your reason. Living according to your mind. Trying to figure things out and living according to the mind. Instead of living through the spirit. The spirit filled life. Of living a life of faith is the substance of things. You can't have faith unless you're hoping for something. Our responsibility is to put the picture, create the picture. I didn't understand that. Like, whoa. I was waiting on God. I'm like, I'm waiting on God, you know, waiting on God to make my life better. And I believe in prosperity. Yay, yay, yay. And I believe God. it's God good. God's a good God. Woo. Where's the picture, Keith? That's what my, that's what my multimillionaire said. He said, what, tell me what it looks like. I'm like, what do you mean? Well, whatever God's will is. God's will, God's will. God's will, whatever he wants for me. <laughs> and my millionaire friend, he says, what if, what if he wants what you want? Well, that couldn't be possible. Why, is your heart wicked? That's what he said to me. Oh! <laughs> he said, is your heart right with God? I'm like, well, yeah. He said, well, what if his wants are your wants? Never thought of that before. All of a sudden, I said, oh, wait a minute, I got a tool. And I need to use that tool. And, and the imagination goes where the mind can't go. The imagination can go into a future. And the imagination has no limitations. The imagination is the realm of possibilities. The, the imagination is the realm of infinite amounts of money. Oh. It needs a picture. You've got to feed it. Have you ever taken the time to go into the future and write it down? Of all the church we do, we don't do this very spiritual exercise. The second picture you need is a, a picture of a hero of who you want to become. That's what he told me. He said, Keith, who, 
Tell me somebody that's in, now I know you want to be like Jesus. Okay, I got it, I got it. He said, but, but let's talk about, let's talk about the world right here where we live. Who's doing what you want to do, Keith? And I'm like, well, I, I spouted off a couple names. He said, here's what I know about the great people. The great people, they emulate to dominate. They emulate to dominate. They see somebody of where they are and say, I'm going to emulate them so I can dominate my craft. Ooh. So remember what I told you, the process? You got to memorize. Come on. You got to what? Memorize. You got to internalize. You got to personalize so you can what? Maximize. Maximize. You know what that guy taught me? He said, whoever you see doing anything, you can do it too, but you got to memorize everything they say. You got to memorize everything they write. You got to read it over and over and over and over, and you got to get it inside of you so it becomes what? personalized and when it's personalized guess what you'll start doing you'll start acting like them you'll start talking like them you'll start being like them come on are you hearing what I'm saying and then guess what your life will become what they are and you'll maximize who you are I'm like wow wow why do you think I'm in why do you think I'll pay any price I have to pay to be in the room of billionaires And when you get in those new rooms, guess what happens? The anointing of God on your life. Because all of a sudden it breaks off, it breaks off all the limitations that the mind puts on you, not the spirit. Is it possible that some billionaires are living out of their spirit more than most Christians who come to church? Because they're living from here. Not living out of here. Whew. And by the way, a lot of the negative thoughts you think about the super rich and how evil you've labeled them, so you don't want to emulate people you think are evil. Right or right? So if you got a big X on the super elite and wealthy and think they're evil, you'll never want to emulate them. But is it possible the world has pre created a negative picture? See, that's why they want to indoctrinate you with success is evil. Rich people are evil. That, that, what, what's, what's, the, what's the culture preaching out to everybody? All those people are evil. It's them and us. There's a separation. So you don't want to be like them. You know what you find when you get in those rooms? You find a lot of people who want to do a lot of good for the masses of people in the world. And you know how they got to the top? They're trying to figure out how to solve problems for the world, not just how to solve problems for my family and me, and that's it. And the bigger you can think about solving mass problems, the more money that you're rewarded. Is there, some, is there some evil billionaires? Oh, you bet there are. But let me tell you, let me tell you, they're the minority. You'll, find, you'll always find a few bad apples. But the world wants to tell you the whole thing is a bad apple. That's why you have to be careful. You have to, you have to whoa, wait a minute. I got to change my thing. Now, listen, to this. this is super cool. This is super cool. I want to tell you something. The poor... Need inspiration, not charity. We as a church need to shift from charity mindset to abundance mindset. The best thing we can do for the poor is to get pictures of wealth into their imagination. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 
The best thing we could do for the poor is not hand them out a sack lunch. The best thing we could do for the poor is what the gospel originally told us to do. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to do what? Preach the gospel to who? The poor. What's the gospel to the poor? You don't have to be poor. You can become rich because of what Christ has done for us. The spirit of poverty is broken forever. Somebody clap on that. Oh, my. So what is our goal? we got to get a picture in. Watch this. we got to get poor people to see pictures of prosperity. What am I doing for my niece and nephews? I'm giving them a picture. I'm doing more than just going down to the trailer park and giving them some handouts and a Christmas gift. Although I do that, the best thing is give them a picture of me. So it's not, what we don't need is more rich people thinking about the poor. Woo, that'll throw you for a loop. It get, it's all about getting more people to think rich. Get poor people to think rich. If we could get poor people to think rich, that's when their life changed. What did my multi-million dollar friend help me to do? In my poverty in my mother-in-law's house, when I was ready to commit suicide, when I was ready, when I looked in my wife's eyes and said, you deserve better than this, you should divorce me. What did my millionaire friend do? He didn't give me a dollar. He didn't give me a dime. But what was the gift he gave me? A picture. And it was all a picture that changed this poor man's life. Of thinking, wait a minute, I can become rich. Now, how many of you are ready to get started? Say, oh yeah. Now, there must be a demand placed on the imagination. I want to show you something. This is interesting. Very, very interesting. You should take a picture of it. <clears throat> when God gave this to me, it was, I was just like, whoa. So this is, this is the mountain. We've all heard the seven mountains, right? But income levels and future you target. So I told you, you got to set a target, right? You got you to have a new picture of your financial situation. But where's the target lines? Like if all we say is think big, we, that's not quantifying it, and it preaches good, but it's like, well, what is big? And in the earth right now, you have 10 levels of financial abundance, right? At the very top of the mountain, which at this point, nobody is living at yet. It's that trillionaire status. There are guys who are, are approaching that very quickly. Now, little side note, we have had trillionaires before. You know who the first trillionaire was? The first trillionaire was Adam. You do know he was a trillionaire, right? God gave him the whole earth. <laughs> he owned it all. Richest man ever in the history of the world, Adam and Eve. <laughs> Start out a place of abundance. It's all yours. <laughs> I mean, know when God blesses you, he likes to bless you big time. <laughs> and, and then the whole, the whole life experience is all designed to shrink your thinking. But we, that's beyond that. Uh, Solomon is actually the fourth, some say the fifth richest man in the history of the world. His, his wealth was somewhere between three and four trillion dollars. So actually, it, you know, other than Adam, then it, was, then it was Solomon, who is one of the wealthiest, at four trillion. And, and in the next session, I'm going to talk about uh, Solomon's secret to his out, outstanding wealth. I'm going to give you the nugget when you see this. Change your life. But level 10 is trillion. Level 9 is... A, is well, let's start at the bottom. The top of the mountain is trillionaire. So 
If we understand the concept of the mountain, it's all about climbing to the top, right? <laughs> we want to take the mountains, but every mountain that you want to take requires money. And the only way to get to the top is have more money. It, you're deceived to think you're going to get to the top with no money. It just doesn't work. But you find out that on the bottom of the rung, level number one is four-figure status. So it's anywhere between $1,000 and $9,000. You're at the bottom of the mountain. Now the scripture says, I'll make you the what? The head and not the above and not beneath. So we got to really look at the different levels. We got four figures. Level two, we got five figures, which is 10,000 to uh, almost 100,000. Then we got six figures, which is 100,000 to almost a million. Then we got millionaire status, level four, which is a million to almost uh, 10 million. Then you got DECA millionaire. DECA millionaire, someone has $10 million or more. Then you go beyond that, you got what they call a CENTA millionaire, uh, which is over 100 million to a billion. Then level seven, you got billionaire. Level eight, you got a DECA billionaire. Level nine, you got a Senta billionaire. Level 10, you got a trillionaire. Now, here's the crazy thing. Here's the crazy thing. Most people, we claim God's going to make us the head and not the tail. But when we look at the levels, right, most people in the church are only on level two of 10. And we think we've arrived financially. And it's like, I have this such a passion. It's like, why are people so blind? It's like you're so comfortable you got stuck because you're so selfish and self-centered. You don't care about anybody else. But if you really care about making a difference and, con and contributing to others and leaving a legacy to your children's 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 children, you got to say, man, I can't be satisfied at just level two, level, level three. And I sure can't be satisfied at level four. I'm not even halfway up the mountain yet. That's why I think every believer should at least set a goal to be a DECA millionaire, $10 million. Because remember, millionaires feel like they're not rich. So everybody should be, see, I, I, my, my challenge is, I, <laughs> dear God, I gotta get, I've gotta, I got to get people just to think they can make six figures and get them to think a million, oh my God, in the church. Because we're all like birds. We're like, cheep, 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 cheep. <laughs> and I, and I, and I got a, John's got a, Apostle John's got a healing anointing. I'm going to have him pray for me after this service because I, I got back problems. Because I got to carry so many people over the finish line. <laughs> it's like people can't, people can't get over there and believe. And here's what I'm saying to you. I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I'm showing you like, you got to have new targets. Where are your targets? Are you setting some big targets? You're, where you're at, you think you've arrived, and God's like, this is puny. The, 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 the top of the mountain's trillionaire. You're still down here with six, six figures scratching at the bottom of the mountain. Come on, wake up. That's what God's saying. I'm not feeling no love in here. <laughs> and this is why, because you know why you're quiet? Because you bounced from your imagination to what? Now you're looking at that going. Are you looking at it with your mind? Y'all supposed to be so spiritual. How spiritual are you? All depends. What can you see? What can you see in the realm of your imagination? You'll never go there till you see it there. Wow. Quantifiable. Targets. Pastors ask me all the time, why don't our people change? You ready for this? 
I said, because people don't set goals so huge that these goals are life-changing. Meaning, I want you to think about this. Who can I use out of the crowd? Who's this lady lady right here? Yeah, you, yeah. You have such a pleasant persona. Stand up, what's your name? Anybody know Catherine here? Is she a nice lady? She's like gold, isn't she? Yeah, let's give, let's give Catherine a hand clap. She, I just, I don't know you, but you just have a beautiful array about you. You can tell you're a nice person. I just tell it. Do you think, if you, if you became a deck of millionaire, do you think your life would look a little different than right now? You do? What would that look like, do you think? I'd like to be able to give a lot more. How would that make you feel? Yeah. Let's give her a hand clap. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. What else? What do you think would change about your life? It changed where you live. Oh, you think so? You don't think you live in the same spot? No. Let's give her a hand clap. No. What else would it change? Seriously, just be honest. I mean, so we're all in your corner. What else would it change? Change where you live? Change how much you give? Would it change car you drive? Would you drive the same car? You'd get you a new car, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Change all... How about what else we think would change? You have more fun. You have more fun. Yeah, let's give her a hand clap. Yeah, man. Yeah, you have more fun. So, 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 are you married? Yeah. You married? What, what, what would you do for your husband? Would you do anything? What would you do for him? Oh, okay, 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 okay. That's because you're so nice. That's because you're so nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, let's give her a hand. I might, mm-hmm. I might become an employer instead of an employee. Ah, would that bless other people? Yeah, let's give her a hand clap. God bless you. You can be seated. So what am I saying? Is that you have to set, she has to set a goal. And she she can't do that with her her mind, can you? If you look at it in your mind, that's unrealistic. Am I right? With where you're at. And so what's going to come up in your mind? All these reasons why you can't. Am I right? What, what's your list? What's the number one thing pops up in your mind why you can't do it? I'm curious. Don't give her an answer. Let her have her own answer, not your answer. What's the reason why you can't? Do you have any? You know, no reason comes in your mind of why that's not possible for you? I can't because I would need some coaching. Is that one of your I can'ts? Okay, let's give her a hand clap for honesty. Isn't that great? So what you'll see is when you place an expectation on the imagination, right? Until you place an expectation, it won't rise to that level. And what you'll instantly have to deal with are the limitations in the brain. The brain's going to fight the imagination. And the imagination is going to say, it's possible. The imagination is going to say, you can do this. The mind's going to say what? The top ten reasons why Kathy can't do it. I don't have a coach. I don't make enough money. I got a job. I'm a pastor. 
I'm in the ministry. Bam, ba ba bam, ba ba bam, ba ba bam. And all of those limitations are what's stopping you from going to the next level. Maybe not a deca millionaire, but it could be stopping you from getting at least to the next rung, to the next level. Good or good, everybody? All right, let's put our hands together. Did you enjoy this session?